Welcome to the latest What Happens Next puzzle. I'm going to take you through a game and then at a critical moment stop and you'll have to work out what happens next. So this is a game between Kulautz and Ryazantsev from uh, the French Team Championship played very recently. The game started out as a Nimzo Indian defence. There we go, Nimzo Indian. And White played Queen C2, currently a very popular method of meeting the Nimzo, of course, the queen move prevents the pawns, the c pawns, being isolated after the exchange on c3. Now there are lots of moves for black here: d5, castles, even b6. C5 is played, one of the main moves. White takes, so this means that black has managed to break up white's pawn front. But white gains a bit of time in being able to push the bishop back. Okay, there are many ways to play this position, but okay, this is it's quite a sharp method. White develops very quickly and puts pressure on the D file, and notice keeps very flexible here. The pawn might come to E3, it might come to E4. Black played Knight H5, trying to uh, push that bishop to a worse square. And the bishop comes back to g3. Now, if this is taken, you'll notice the h file is opened. So basically, black preempts that with h6, obviously preventing uh, you know, a, a hit on h7. e3 that keeps this diagonal open, could be useful for white. And the bishop comes back to e7. Well, it's probably necessary if black is going to play d6, of course. Now bishop b2 looks normal here, but white played queen d3, which forces black into exchanging on g3, because the bishop is about to escape to d6. So black exchanges on g3, but that means the h-file is now, well, semi-open, half-open anyway. And the reason White wanted to force this was to try and exploit the fact that he can use the rook on the h-file by playing g4. So White is playing very aggressively indeed. The knight comes over, okay, the queen drops back, and as we'll see, that makes way for the rook to come up the board. So Black is playing what's called a kind of hedgehog structure, with these pawns on the third rank, and that closes out white's pieces. It looks a bit cramped, but black can break out very uh, very swiftly on occasion. Rook d4, okay, this is very aggressive. Notice white is not castling. It's trying to uh, generate some play on the king side. Now queen d1, and of course on, on the d-file as well. And now knight e4. So white is playing very ambitiously here. Now, if black wanted, he could perhaps take on e4, just exchange the bishop for a knight and play that position. That would certainly minimise the risk and minimise any danger on the king side. But black decides to counter-attack here, and I think I understand why he did this, because white's king is still in the middle. Perhaps he can use the c-file, um, perhaps the open e-file as well. So this is a very tempting move indeed. White took... And now drop the knight back to g3. Now, again, this is the most ambitious, the most risky move. Let's see what white has in mind. Well, he certainly didn't have in mind playing the rook back to d2, because then black would have made a, well, a very uh, obvious sacrifice on e3. And after taking, queen takes g3 check, and... Well, already black has enough for the exchange, but after knight c5, this is looking very serious indeed, with the idea of hopping into e4, among others. So black would be doing wonderfully there. But no, that was never white's intention. White decided to leave the rook on d4 and sacrifice the exchange. Black took it, and black dropped the knight back to f8 to try and bolster the king side. So what has white got for this? Well, two superbly placed knights for a start. 
and you can see that black has had to exchange off well in order to win that rook this rather effective dark squared bishop that controlled a lot of squares on the king side so definite positional compensation for white but is that enough here's the position that I'd like you to mull over and I'm going to give you two alternatives you've got to decide which you think is best okay first alternative is g5 would you play g5 here and your other alternative is knight takes g7 so things are really hotting up in this position so those are your alternatives g5 or knight takes g7 this is rather a typical position for when you've sacrificed material at a certain point you have to decide how to move forward and of course you're going to need to calculate a great deal this is not a simple position the very best of luck once I finish speaking on the screen two buttons will appear you just click on the move that you want to play and that'll take you through to the next clip where I'll analyze the consequences good luck